Hello everyone, good to see you. Paul Tranny here. What's up, Sean, Susan, Clarissa? Good to have you here. Uh, my name is Paul Tranny. I'm gonna be your host for today's daily creative challenge. Uh, I'll be with you for two weeks, nine challenges. I wanna dive right into it. Um, for those of you elsewhere, jump over to behance.net forward slash Adobe Live because that's where I'm gonna be broadcasting from and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into this daily creative challenge. Uh, challenge tab, of course, on that Behance site. You can kind of check that out. Also, be aware of the Discord because that's where we're gonna continue the conversation like so. And it's a very special day, I would say, honestly, because we're gonna take a magical journey through Photoshop, shall we? So here's my fun little map. We're gonna take a journey through Photoshop, uh, showing you all the ins and outs, um, of you know most everything Photoshop can do, uh, even though it's going to take more than nine days. All right, so we're going to journey through. Don't worry, it's not going to be all Middle Earth graphics or something ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, that's what we're going to do. We're actually let me share my screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, join my Discord as well. So let me just kind of switch over right here. Here we are. There we are. It's actually my desktop. We're going to start right over here. Uh, by the way, when you go to, sorry, I don't even have that open right now. Let's switch over. Um, right here, touch-ups. That's what we're dealing with. We're going to do um, some simple touch-ups and it's going to get, it can get uh, pretty, pretty complex pretty quick. But we're going to get started by downloading this file right here. Okay. So this file is going to really start us off right over here at the coast, the coastline, if you will. So this is the file we're gonna work with. All right. Uh, yes, the RGB channel. You guys, yeah, some of them, some of the phrases work better than others. <laughs> the patch tool, I don't know. It should just be like, I don't know. That sh this should be marshes or something. Here's the blend, blend moat. Instead of blend mode, it's blend moat. Uh, so you get the idea. All right, so we're gonna start with this file. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. We'll get this started. Again, this is day one. This is the photo and this is very typical of, let me move my mic out of the way, uh, any photo that you typically take, right? So it's gonna look just kind of drab and not that great to be honest with you. Uh, you're gonna have situations like this where you have, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take this beautiful picture. This is on the Oregon coast, right? This is near Oceanside. But like some, another photographer is in my shots. Like, what are you doing there? This is dark. I must be like, I'm, am I falling? Is the, is the earth really at a slant or what's going on? Or is it my camera? So we're gonna fix all of these issues right now, okay? So this is just APSD. First thing I'm noticing, by the way, is that it is not level, like so, right? So I could just draw with the uh, rectangular marquee tool and you can see that it's actually not level, it's at an angle. So that's the first thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. There you go, Al Alberto. I know what you're saying. So everybody has these photos. So I thought this was a good place to start, right? So let's dive into this. Literally dive in since we're dealing with the coast. We're going to go over here to the crop tool. We're going to select this crop tool, right? And this is what I like. A couple of cool things here. First off, you'll notice that you can start to manipulate um, the corners and kind of level this out yourself. Or what you could do is you can go right over here too this little straighten button, right? Again, this is sort of the first step in doing a touch up is just getting our photo reasonably level. So what you do with the straighten tool is you draw a straight line for the horizon like so, and then it will make it straight and that works out great, okay? There is more here and what I'm gonna be talking about a lot is content aware tools, right? Hello, Hazma and Michelle. Hello everyone, guys. I'm on my fifth cup of coffee or something, it's crazy. Got up way too early. All right, a special um, welcome to Pro, Pro, Prolenta? Pro, Proletina, Proletina, sorry. Can I just call you Tina, is that better? Uh, if you are joining me for the first time, please feel free to say hello. So you're gonna hear me talk a lot about content aware when you're doing touch-ups, right? Content aware. It's gonna be a content aware fill. So what's gonna happen, since I straightened it out, I'm gonna have all these little gaps, right? That are gonna get in the way, right? I'm gonna to have to fill those gaps typically. In fact, if I have that turned off, right? And if I had it turned off, it's actually gonna make it, um, it's gonna crop into my photo a little too much. 
right? And it's gonna end up giving me these um, spaces up here that I have to fill in, right? So you do content aware, you use the straighten tool, that's all you need to do, boom. Let's straighten that out a little bit more. Let's make this a little bit bigger. It's gonna fill in all these lovely little gaps right in here, okay? Um, you could uncheck this, delete cropped pixels, and it'll keep any of those cropped pixels in case you wanna recrop it again. All right, so there we go. Selecting that, our photo straightened, right? Let's do that one more time, shall we? Crop tool, boom, content aware, check that box, and it will fill it like so. All right, there it is. Easy enough, right? Fills in all those corners. Let's brighten this up now. Um, and again, welcome everybody who is new. What's up? RB, good to have you here. So um, in brightening up a photo, a lot of people go to like image adjustments and uh, you might go to say brightness and contrast. That's an easy first step, right? You'll try to brighten it up that way. All those uh, variations in color and color depth, to be honest with you. So I can never bring back those clouds, right? So first rule of thumb is like, we're never gonna be going right here. Mode, or excuse me, image adjustment. Think of the opposite end. Right down here, this is what we can do, is we can go down here and we could use those same adjustment layers as what they are. So now if I apply brightness and contrast, I get sliders right over here in the properties panel. We can go ahead and crank that up. And the cool thing is this is all based on layers. We can see them right over here. Sorry, my head's in the way. It's moving me back, right? This is on its own separate layer. So I could turn that on and off and uh, it's not gonna destroy the pixels. Cheers. Okay, you ready for this? Are you guys ready? Because there's two different ways that I do some touch-ups to this, to this photo. I'm gonna show you the, uh, the way you would logically potentially think, and then I'm gonna show you sort of like the pro level way of editing this photo, okay? So if I wanted to remove this person, this photographer who's in my shot so obviously, I could go over here to some of these tools off to the side. Oh, healing brush, spot healing brush, right? We have this clone stamp tool as well, right? We also have patch tools, content aware moves, you know, a lot of these. But I'm just gonna go with a simple spot healing brush tool, just like so. I'll come right in here, I'll make my brush larger just by pressing the um, uh, closing bracket uh, key on my keyboard. But essentially that's what I'm doing right up here is I'm changing the size of my brush as we can see right there, right? We can also change the hardness level. So whether it has soft edges or hard edges, right? But this is where typically people will go, will come in here. Oops, hello, escape, craziness. And you can paint over that person and then they'll magically disappear, which is pretty darn awesome, right? So it samples from pixels around you, right? Around that selected area and removes them. And it does a pretty good job, okay? Now I'm gonna take things to the next level because this is what I wanna get into right now, okay? And we're gonna deal with some magical elements as well. So um, check this out. You ready for this? I'm gonna turn off this brightness and contrast. I'm gonna have this coastline layer selected. And what we're gonna do, Wade and Tunk and Richard, is um, we're gonna to go to, uh, we're going to actually convert this to a smart object. And trust me, if you're new here, if you grasp all these concepts that I'm covering this morning, then that will go a long way. Okay. I'm gonna do a right click and I'm gonna convert this layer to a smart object. And our whole goal in Photoshop is to protect those pixels. So nothing I'm gonna do is gonna be destructive. So we're not gonna be getting rid of pixels at all. It's gonna be great. Converting it to a smart object actually makes it kind of like a, it makes it a separate file. We'll wait for it right here. And here it is. Here's this smart object. So technically it's another uh, protected file. Like, yeah, I can come in here, I can change it, right? And uh, all that fun stuff, but that's kind of a protected file now, you can you can call it that. 
All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to filter and I'm gonna go to camera raw filter. Ah, this darn, I got this new magnifying tool, guys, and it just is annoying. It's not working for me. All right, filter, camera raw filter. So this is your easy button when it comes to um, doing simple touch-ups. So camera raw filter, that's where I'm going. I'm in this camera raw interface and off to the side, rather than me uh, adjusting the highlights, the shadows, the blacks, the texture and clarity, you know, adding all those adjustment layers, all I do is I hit auto. That's typically where I'll start, auto. You can go from default to auto and that automatically makes it look better, right? But we could also increase the exposure, the contrast. We can give it more texture as well. Uh, and yeah, there we go. Making this so much better, right? So much brighter, right? Easy enough. We want to have a little bit more vibrance. Yeah, we can deal with the vibrance. Usually is more delicate than the saturation. Saturation usually will be a little bit more drastic. But uh, again, just adding some nice tones to this image, just like so. Cool. Ah, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. So right down here, by the way, back to her, like, or this photographer, whoever this person is, like, again, I still might want to remove them. And I'm going to do it in a non-destructive fashion. But right up here, in Camera Raw, if you want to re remove red eye, if you want to remove a spot right here, oh, spot removal, that's what that says. I don't know why it's white on yellow, but it's ridiculous. Sure enough, we have a brush, right? And we can come over here and just kind of, I could either make it a very large brush or maybe a smaller brush and just kind of roll over whatever I want to remove. And what it does is it samples from this area right here. In fact, you can hit the forward slash key and it'll start sampling from different areas. The nice thing about this, doing this touch up is I can control where I wanna sample it, right? Like that, just kind of moving that over there. Let me undo this. <laughs> let's, let's just get, let's just delete that. <laughs> let's do this one more time. That was, the shape was looking a little bit, I was not comfortable with the shape I just made. So let's change it like this. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Don't make it weird, guys. Don't make it weird. So again, I can grab this sample point, move it over here. It's gonna sample from that area and paste it right into there. So that's what I will typically use when I'm doing a touch up. This is more the professional way of doing things, just so you know. Right, so that being done, I like the look of that. You can hit J to make it hide, just to hide it, and everything's looking much better. If I wanted to brighten up the rocks even more, you know, rather than applying a, like an adjustment layer or doing these global adjustments, I can have local adjustments, local touch-ups. So I can go right over here to my graduated filter, right? And from here, I can just drag up like so, and what it does is it applies all of these settings to just this lower part. You can obviously see I have lots of, uh, I can change the temperature. You can kind of see just what I'm doing right here. You can see that it's basically affecting that area. But again, what I wanna do is just brighten that up a little bit more and taking down that saturation a little bit like so. Okay, that being done, boom. Everybody's laughing at my joke. <laughs> yeah, those tooltips, Chad, what's up with that? Okay, so now what we have here, if we look over here, it says, hey, you know what? You're a smart object. You're a separate file that's protected that you could always edit. But you know what? All those, everything you just did isn't destructive. So I could turn off the camera raw filter and we can have our before and then our after as well. What a big difference this makes, right? Uh, I, Steve, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know why my tooltips are a little, little bit different. Um, I don't know if that's what update when that happened or what. So um, anyways, you just recognize the tools just by their icons typically anyway. 
All right, so that looks pretty good. I have this guy here. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, I could tell some of you want to. Uh, again, I just did some quick touch-ups. I can always double-click on this file. I can edit it, edit this PSB if I want to, right? Or I can double-click on this camera raw filter. Click right there, ba -ba, and go back into camera raw and, again, kind of come in here and remove this person as well. Okay, right down here, zoop, just like that, and they're gone, okay? Uh, there's two different types of um, healing that you can do, it's, or excuse me, spot removal. There's heal, and then there's clone. Clone does a one-for-one, one, grab this pixel, put it here. A heal actually tends to match the tone of where you're pasting those pixels to. So healing typically does a better job. Let's not forget. Right down here, I need to grab this shadow as well. <clears throat> and that's done, okay? All right. Kind of see our before and then our after. All right, let's move on. I wanna add some cool items too, because I think you guys wanna take it to the next level. Andrew, what's up, buddy? Good to have you here. Feel free to say hello if you're I don't know. I feel I have. I didn't stream that much last week. I was like really busy doing other stuff and prepping content. But now I have some other elements that I gave you guys just for fun. By the way, I said, hey, you know what? Since we're dealing with this magical land, right? Our journey through Photoshop. Like, couldn't we have some fun, like magical creatures? And again, like I said before. It isn't all gonna be fantasy Lord of the Rings themes. <laughs> Don't worry. But I said, hey, you know, what if there was a giant skull out there or a skeleton that we can kind of add to this coastal line just to make it more amazing? Or uh, if you wanna go a little bit more simple, we can even add a boat in there as well. Okay, what's up, Mel's in the house? Um, Oh, make sure you update uh, uh, oh, Camera Raw via the CC app. Oh, okay, gotcha. I should double check that. I just got a new laptop, so I wanna watch out for that. So just like we did before, what was my basically my first step? Converting something to a smart object. That's usually where I'll go um, if I want to, uh, if I don't know the size of something because and let's just rasterize this layer real fast. We'll do two different versions. One boat, two boat. This second boat is gonna be a smart object. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna shrink both of them. I'm gonna have this little boat way out there. It's gonna be so cute, right? And you're like, no, nah, I don't like it out there that far. I wanna scale it back up. Well, let's scale it back up. Scale it back up like so. And obviously, hopefully you can tell that this one on the right is much clearer because it is the smart object, right? So we did not damage the pixels when shrinking it down. So that's my first go-to. For the pros in the house, Sig, what's up? Right, Kathleen Illustrated, right? You'd want to go in and you'd want to add shortcuts. This is a shortcut I use all the time, and it is just turning that layer into a smart object, convert to smart object. It's control option command, oh, uh, boom. Control option S, that's what that grunt was, right? So anyways, that's what I do, I gotta protect it. What shall we do? Should we mess with this skull? Let's do this skull. Let's have a skull out there in the, in the uh, way out there, I don't know, doing something, just hanging out, right? For this skull, what I would do, and again, I'm getting a little advanced because we're kind of going beyond touch-ups because we've already touched up the background. Uh, I'm gonna add a, right down here, a layer mask. And again, if you're new to joining me here, if you understand all these concepts today, you're well on your way to being a professional. Adding a layer mask, right? When I do that, click, it adds, and I apologize for this panel being so small. There we go. It adds the layer mask right here. So if I paint on black with my brush, painting with black, it's gonna remove it because it makes that mask. 
So I can go ahead and have this skull kind of coming out of the water like so. I can change my brush. These are actually all the default brushes. I, was used, I would use like a spotty brush like this one. Ooh, the scratch blend, that's cool. Uh, but just this Supreme splatter, right? And I can make it look like sort of like waves, splash of water right there in the front, right? And make it a little bit smaller. But essentially I want that to be just not a straight clean line we can have more of that skull like that, okay? Obviously the skull is a lot darker than the rest of the scene. Well, guess what? I could go through camera raw again if I want to, to brighten it up that way or use some adjustment layers. So we'll just increase this exposure like so. It'd be those same settings, click okay. Right, you get the idea. All right, so you guys have all these elements to play with, by the way. I included all these today. The team loved me because I, I was like, hey guys, can you update the file real fast? <laughs> Just so you had elements to play with. So play with this skull, put it out there. Um, you know, I would probably duplicate the layer, rasterize, let's just do this. Apply layer mask, command T, shift key, flip it, right? Again, put that back there. Yeah, I know I'm going fast, adjusting. Uh, the blend mode, maybe. Blur it a little bit. Uh, add some more waves to it and some different things like that. B for brush, paint, uh, and darken it is what I would do. All right, now I'm just showing off. Maybe not that dark. But just making this, oops, look a little darker right down here. This should only be reflecting in the water there, right? Whatever. Right, you get the idea. That's kind of what I was working on. And uh, I'll continue. Flowers and a butterfly coming out. Hey, that's funny that I actually did use a skull because you guys always tease me about I'm using skulls or I'm using flowers, if not both. Um, but just so you know, if you're curious, um, this all came from Dimension. So feel free. I know, again, this is a Photoshop daily creative challenge, but there's also Dimension, which is where I just rem rendered the skull from, right? So check out Dimension if you have a chance and uh, see how you can really kind of take your uh, designs to the next level, okay? Uh, if I get more into compositing, I would actually make this darker. I'd make sure this scene, like just like you have those um, uh, sort of islands out there, I got to make sure the skull matches the same, sort of the same way, basically. Right? Make this a little darker. Oh, there we go. That's looking much better. Color burn is what I need. Color burn right there. And again, I'm, I apologize if I went a little fast for the second part, but I thought it'd be fun to just go beyond touching up a background and making something a little bit more fantastic, right? So once you're done with that, you could go ahead and export out as a ping file if you want to, right? Quick export as ping like so, to my desktop. It could also be JPEG, which I advise. No reason it needs to be a ping. And then make sure you post to Discord right in here, current challenge, like so. Coastline ping file. Ooh, my file is too powerful. Okay, I'm so glad this came up. Let's do this. Oh, I wanted to give you a lot of pixels, but there's only an eight megabit uh, uh, upload um, file size. So let's go to export. I'll do a save for web, right? This is what I'll do. I'll do a save for web. And right over here, this is where I'm just gonna make it smaller. You know, a thousand pixels wide. That's all it needs to be like that. 60% quality JPEG, save it to your desktop. And again, this is just our chance to, or excuse me, it's your chance to show off. Hey, why not? And uh, also seek advice if you want. Here's the final from day one. Hope you like it. Again, only spent 15 minutes on it, 20 minutes. Uh, there it is. 
uh, make your own. Would love to see uh, which you guys come up with, Beatrice. So that, hopefully that works out for you guys. I have other uh, another version I made that I could actually dig up since I still have a minute or two. Here's a uh, here's one as well. Since somebody said they liked it like a little bit darker, here's a darker version. And in this case, I used um, uh, the skeleton and uh, the skull. So, right, right on down to my last minute. That's all I have. Uh, yeah, you can always hit pause and play. I did go over the lo a lot. Don't uh, don't get discouraged if you feel like I went too fast. I'm there for you as a resource, and I hope you guys hang out with me for the next couple of weeks, uh, because uh, yeah, I'll be hanging out in here, kind of participating, and uh, just being your your cheerleader. And if you need advice, would love to uh, would love to help you. All right, that's about it. But that is our journey through Photoshop. Hopefully, you like that. I think it's going to be really fun. A uh, couple weeks as we just hit the coast. Uh, we'll did it, get into more detail later. And who do we have up next? Excuse me. <coughs> just a tickle in my throat. Let's not freak out, everybody. <laughs> we have a lovely schedule here. Uh, vector art up next. So you get a little, little Photoshop, a little vector. Um, not that you can't do vector in Photoshop because you can create vector content, and we will. Um, how about a little luminosity? Luminosity is what I just read from Jenny uh, in Discord. That's why I'll be hanging out, everybody. Thanks so much. I guess I'll let you go. And uh, also, don't forget, uh, I'll actually be posting this to uh, to social media as well on my Instagram, just so you know. So thanks, Beatrice, Daniel, everybody. Have a good one. And stick around for Vector Art up next. Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge starts, starts today as well. Um, by the way, when you submit these to Discord, um, they might be reviewed. Curvin might be reviewing them in the next segment. So, yes, stay well, everybody. Wash your hands. Get a good night's sleep. Call your mom. She misses you. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you soon.